This is Digital Perspectives with Brad Kimes. Subscribe for new content notifications. Now, here's Brad Kimes. Come on in. Welcome back to Digital Perspectives, everybody. Uh, let's go ahead and do the numbers and get right into this thing. Let's start with Bitcoin. The numbers, by the way, are brought to you by iTrust Capital and Pure VPN. Guys, if you need an IRA, whether it's crypto IRA or gold IRA, there's nobody better to talk to than iTrust Capital. And if you are looking for anonymity protection online, which you should be. I don't know anyone who doesn't need it. I've been very happy with Pure VPN. Make sure you check it out. I've got links for both of those in the description box. Let's go ahead and do the numbers now. Bitcoin, $11,768.63. Ethereum, $432.54. XRP, $0.29. Cents. 0 0.2949, in fact. We are looking at approximately in a 24 hour we are down about one percent and we are at 2.2 billion on the 24 hour volume total circulating supply 44 billion 918 million plus those are your numbers okay make sure you get on the rich list guys get on that monthly newsletter i'm going to have some exclusive content in there for you and i'm going to tell you right now some of that exclusive content is going to absolutely be diana adachi an interview that I did with her from formerly from Accenture, now at Yaka Labs and worked at Hard Yaka with works at Hard Yaka with uh, Greg Kidd. It is an amazing interview. Diana Adachi was the person at Accenture who actually did the due diligence on Ripple years ago, which really sent the high sign to the rest of the financial sector about how amazing ripple is and the technology they have with xrp as well so make sure you definitely check that out now let's go ahead and get into this thing so today we're going to talk about quantum financial systems we get a little bit of understanding about what it is and whether ripple's prepared for it or not and then we're going to talk about some other things about some of the most powerful men in the world and what they're doing with their money right now Okay, let's start right here. Quantum financial system, what is it? QFS stands for quantum financial system, and according to Galactic Connection site, it is an off-world monetary system which cannot be rigged in contrast with the current financial system as it cannot be compromised despite the many attempts to do so by the cabal. The cabal's corrupt central banking will collapse. Now, let's go on to... Quantum banking system. This is from Wikipedia. Quantum money is a proposed design of banknotes, making them impossible to forge by using quantum physics. The idea influenced the development of quantum key distribution protocols used in quantum cryptography. Okay. What is quantum cryptography? We need to know these things so we understand this terminology. I think we have a very important parallel, by the way, between crypto and quantum computing and quantum financial systems. That's why we're discussing this stuff today. And we are going to go into this material quite heavily moving forward and how it affects the new monetary system that we've all been talking about for a long time, which absolutely, in my mind, includes Ripple and XRP. Quantum cryptography is a process of encrypting data or converting plain text into scrambled text so that only someone who has the right key can read it. Quantum cryptography, by extension, simply uses the principles of quantum mechanics to encrypt data and transmit it in a way that cannot be hacked. Okay, so the next knee-jerk reaction for me was, is how does this affect Ripple and XRP, and do they use quantum cryptography for anything they're using it for. Is XRP using post-quantum cryptography signatures for its digital hash encoding? Here we see Joel Katz respond. This is three years ago, by the way. Ripple originally offered only SECP 256K1 signatures for a variety of reasons. We later added support for the ED25519 signatures. We don't currently support any quantum resistance signature schemes, but adding a new scheme to Ripple is quite easy and could be accomplished within two to three months if needed. 
faster if the need was urgent. Now, that's amazing to me because that puts me at ease right there. Now, let's go ahead and go to the next thing here because he had answered this, is Ripple prepared for quantum computer attacks? And he answers right here back in 2017, yes, additional algorithms can easily be added as we added the ED25519. Existing accounts can be resecured with a new key if desired. So you won't need a new Ripple address. We haven't actually added any quantum safe algorithms yet because none of the ones available today are perfect for our use case. And any algorithm we add will have the support forever. So we'd prefer to wait as long as we safely can so that we all have the most information to make the choice of algorithms to implement. That is really comforting news that they understand exactly what's available. Now, just as recently as last month, there was uh, David Schwartz again talking about uh, quantum computers will be a threat to Bitcoin and XRP. He's made it very clear as of three years ago that they know exactly how to handle that and they can have a solution in place relatively quickly. All right. So there's that quantum financial system. Very real. Now, where is it applicable? Listen to what this lady on J.P. Morgan's channel says about where quantum financial systems can be or what, what quantum uh, computing is really good for. Let's listen. And quantum computing is very good at parallel processing. So in terms of use cases, uh, they're really optimized for the parallel use cases. So something that comes to mind is large scale optimization. Okay. So in financial services, let's say oh, financial services. You're trying to optimize a particular portfolio and you have 12,000 stocks and you need to maximize the returns based on different variables and constraints uh, within your portfolio. Quantum computing would be very helpful mm -hmm. in that. So now she's talking about how you could use that in a wide portfolio for stocks to analyze trends. But she's absolutely pointing to the entire financial system right? That's exactly what she's saying. So now let's go on and look and, and please note this. The current administration has established $75 million quantum computing centers. Now this was last month. This was reported here. This has been an ongoing thing with the United States government and the current administration with quantum computing centers being built. And they're establishing a lot more money than that. Because if you go down into this article, it actually shows that there's even bigger budget of, uh, the direct, uh, Directorate of Technology at the NSF, or yeah, NSF, that would be given $100 billion over five years to invest in American research, including quantum computing. $100 billion over five years. So it is a very real thing that we're walking towards. And then we look at this. Now, this is from Barclays, a guy from Barclays here talking about quantum computing in Banking Explained. And this is a moment where he talks about other challenges for quantum computing. Let's just listen to this little quick exchange here. So one challenge is, if you have a problem, how do you know which quantum algorithm you should use for it? Do you need to invent that new algorithm? Well, actually, what you can do is you can look at the NIST database of known quantum algorithms. You can check, does your problem already have a known solution? NIST is uh, the National Institute of Standards Technology, I believe, if I've got the acronym right. However, the more important thing to understand about NIST for us in this particular understanding of news here is that NIST is really what that outside agency that overlooks all the technology and innovation and usually what they recommend is adopted by government. R3 was recently recommended as a great solution for a new implementation of transactions, cross-border, and all of those things, and obviously Corda and the language they use for the computing and the whole bit. What's also important to note here is that we're looking at Dr. Lee Brain, Barclays Bank. This is Barclays Bank. We know that Ripple is obviously partnered with Barclays Bank, and we can see that back as far as here, and it goes back even further than this article, but it just goes to show you how deeply we are tied into all of these different entities and the notion of moving towards some kind of quantum financial system, whether it's sooner rather than later. This is a very relevant conversation, and there's a lot more for us to discuss. So, 
Then we look at Hyperledger, and we know that Hyperledger is basically a consortium of this new financial tech, this new fintech and innovation of payments and how we can cut cost and efficiency and scalability, increase scalability and increase security even. And here's Accenture. Again, if you're not on that monthly rich list, you know, get on that rich list. Uh, that is an amazing interview with Diana Adachi, and I'm going to release it there first. And then I'm probably going to put it on the podcast. And I have a podcast as well, and I will put that link in the uh, newsletter for everybody also. So look, look at all these partners. We know American Express, right? We know that DTCC has been testing using distributed ledger technology, and they're going to. We know that there's so many names here that are tied in jp morgan look at them look at them all and we know that we're in here too where is it uh cme group right i mean look at all these names that are in here and we're down here we are right here so there's ripple in this well wh when i look at all of this swift is even in here we know swift is tied in with r3 we know r3 is tied in deeply with ripple right all of these connections but what is this what are we looking at it's Hyperledger Fabric, right? It's the big consortium of a brand new financial system. Yes, these are all old players that have been in the current traditional system, but they're here in this way, in this consortium, to lead the new financial system. Well, this is interesting to me because we just, you know, recently had Brian Brooks express that banks can custody crypto that are federally chartered in the United States of America. Now, that's important. He's also said quite clearly that they were going to come out with what? A federal charter in the fall that was more uh, uh, specific about it, all the details they need to have for going forward. So it sounds like the OCC is basically going to become a giant regulatory sandbox in, with the charter they released in the fall. Now, here's another com set of comments from Brian Brooks. Let's run through this and understand what he's saying here. OCC chief expects Swift like bank to blockchain connections in three to five years. Really? Because they're actually already in place. Acting comptroller Brian Brooks touted stable coins, cost and speed advantages in a podcast interview while knocking the Fed's preference for government owned payment rails. Now, this is important when he says about stable coins. And wait till you see the metaphor he uses, it is pretty powerful. Acting Comptroller of Currency Brian Brooks said Thursday he thinks banks will be connecting to blockchain the way they are connecting to the Society of World Interbank Financial Telecommunications SWIFT network in three to five years. Then they won't be the bottleneck of transactions, he told Jeremy Allaire, CEO of Circle, in a Zoom interview for Stablecoin Payments software company Money Movement Podcast. Instantaneous settlement with Stablecoin would be a game changer. Brooks said, noting that the system speed and cost advantages, there is a 7% charge on transactions changing dollars to yen. He said, imagine if you could take the cost out, he said. Beyond that, he said, stablecoin may, pre or may help preserve the role of the dollar in the financial system. Currently, we are the only country in the world that does not have to change money to buy oil in Saudi Arabia. Even the Saudis do. That can't last for years. Did you hear what he just said? Currently, we are the only country in the world that doesn't have to change money to buy oil in Saudi Arabia. Even the Saudis do. That can't last for years. The dollar has been the reserve currency for a long time, not because it's better or easier to use, but because it's more liquid Stablecoin is to the dollar what email is to the letter. Stablecoin is to the dollar what email is to the letter. That's an enormous statement. And users need to have no less confidence in it than if they were using a prepaid debit card, he argued, for a decentralized system of payment rails led by companies rather than one that is government-owned noting that the Visa network began as a credit card offered by Bank of America. Why I always find puzzle, what I always find puzzling is we talk about this is why, given the history, people now believe that the payment system is a government service. The comments could be seen as a blow against the Federal Reserve in their effort to roll out the FedNow system. 
when the Clearinghouse Real-Time Payments Network is already running. With 29 participants, financial institutions, and a reach of more than half a dozen demand deposit accounts in the U.S., my personal view is the ultimate public ownership of the payment rails is when you have a network like the Internet hmm, of interconnected institutions and computers that are maintaining ledgers and allowing direct person-to-person transactions. Brooks said, "We're way down the path of dis- we're way down the path of decentralization." Before joining the Office of Comptroller Currency, Brooks served as the chief legal officer for the digital currency exchange Coinbase. Regulators need to establish reserve and audit expectations for stable coins, he said, and the Bank Secrecy Act and anti-money laundering safeguards are the most important aspects of money transmission networks to be perfected. There needs to be a balance between privacy and the ability to investigate crime with stablecoins, Brooks said. Private transactions that can't be traced forever is a non-starter. The risk of stablecoins are not trivial, Brooks said, but added there is too much public appetite for their benefits to stop them. By an analogy, Brooks said every municipal government wanted to ban Uber, but consumer demand for the service overwhelmed their objections. And well said by Brian Brooks. And this just highlights at the bottom about the uh, clarity that he gave about banks being able to custody crypto and hold it on their balance sheets. You know, there's so much in here that's just absolutely fantastic. And the reason I wanted to start with the quantum financial system and quantum computing is because the government is working on it. The administration is working on these things. They're pouring $100 billion over five years into the projects. And we're seeing the, you know, and have seen for years, the consortium and the collectives of all of these traditional companies coming together to bring in new fintech and innovation with blockchain and DLT, right? And then we see the efforts of the regulatory bodies coming in to make the necessary changes and adjustments and even education about this new fintech and innovation. And furthermore, explaining here how stable coins are really going to be as email was to the letter. Unbelievable, profound remarks from Brian Brooks and the OCC. Collectively, I find it interesting because now let's look at old money. What is old money doing at the notion of a collapsing world that had a liquidity crisis, economically speaking, before there was ever a pandemic? What were they doing? They knew that there was trouble coming. And look what they're doing now. Shout out to Michael Val Five Links, Warren Buffett, Berkshire Hathaway added Barrett Gold Corp to its portfolio in the second quarter, sending shares of the world's second largest miner of the metal surging. Here it even further states that he dumps J.P. Morgan, Wells Fargo, buys <laughs> Barrett Gold. One way to understand that he's dumping companies that create paper money to buy a company that produces real money, which is gold. And obviously this is coming from a biased source like Jim Rickards, but it's also very accurate. I call it a sign of the times, he says. Economists call this liquidity preference. I call it a sign of the times. And it's remarkable because you see the older people, the older investors going to trusted precious metals like gold. Gold is revered as money and valuable everywhere, right? And then we have this. We have this from Gold Telegraph this week. Bridgewater purchased the equivalent of 170,000 ounces of gold worth $340 million at current prices. Regulatory filing showed Ray Dalio. Ray Dalio. I got to be honest. You know, we're seeing the older traditional firms, investment firms, and investment guys moving into gold. We see a new collective of companies coming together. We know full well that XRP is smack dab in the middle of this with Ripple and the efforts they've made as a company for their software, as well as the implementation of XRP, the asset. You know, to me, it is quite obvious that there is something very big coming. And when you really drill down in the comment here that was made by uh, Brian Brooks from the Office of Comptroller of Currency. 
Currently, we are the only country in the world that does not have to change money to buy oil in Saudi Arabia, and even the Saudis do. That can't last for years. The dollar has been the reserve currency for a long time, not because it's better or easier to use, but because it's more liquid. Is something about to change? The stable coin is to the dollar, what email is to the letter? And if that is about to change where it's no longer necessary for the Saudis or anyone else to convert to the U.S. dollar, are we going to see what we all talk about so often, a new financial system that could be an integration of using quantum computing and blockchain and DLT? And could it be that we're going to see XRP placed as that neutral reference point asset in between all the currencies so you no longer need to exchange to the U.S. dollar or buy to the U.S. dollar? Some pretty amazing stuff going on, ladies and gentlemen. I will tell you that we're going to have a very special guest on this show in about a week. I'm not going to tell you who it is, but it's going to be pretty remarkable so keep a lookout for that. And that's going to do it for me today. All of this is pointing to something very big coming at my house. And I'm interested to see your comments below this video. Make sure you leave a comment, hit the like and subscribe, share with somebody you know. I will catch all of you on the next one.